Hello and welcome to the second tutorial um, in my Haskell slash functional programming tutorial series. Um, in this tutorial, I plan on talking about functions, lists, and maybe sort of how to think about programming in Haskell. Um, I think that's what I'll cover. These, these tutorials are completely unscripted, so I, I, I don't really know, uh, but we'll find out. Watch the end. <laughs> so, um, okay. So I, I guess the first thing to talk about is um, maybe the way the way we think in Haskell. So what what is a program? And you might go, oh well, a program is uh, it's um, uh, binary, maybe, maybe scripts that, that 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 have a sequence of instructions that interface. I. I you you might go into the details like that, but but Haskellers are cooler than you. They 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 think on a higher level, so they they would say, no, a program is simply something that maps a set of inputs to a set of outputs. Um, and of course, this is a really interesting definition because it's exactly the same as how they define a function. And then you can so clearly see sort of how Haskellers think. They, a program is, you know, it's built of functions and we simply compose them together to bring out the full functionality of the program. Um, so you're really thinking about composing functions together to sort of enhance functionality. That's what you're thinking about. Um, so now that I've mentioned that, it's probably a good idea to talk about functions. So looking at my screen, um, I just made a blank cabal project and opened the REPL. Um, nothing special. Um, so, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import um, two libraries, uh, data.char and data.list. Well, I forgot the imports. <laughs> okay, so now that we have both of those imported. Um, let's look at some functions. So if I if I type colon t, um, it's going to give me the type of whatever follows. So is upper is a function in data.char that tells you it has it gets passed a character and it gets tell, tells you if it's uppercase or not. And you can see the type is written like that char to bool. Makes sense. Maps characters to booleans. And we can uh, test this out. Um, is upper a true? Ah, false. Space false. One false. So you can kind of see what it's doing. Um, now notice that I didn't. I didn't put any brackets around the inputs to the function. Um, and there's a reason for that, and it's because all functions take only one input. So what's the point of brackets? Now you're probably thinking, what? One input, but like I can define a C function, for example, like this, int A, int B, you know, return A plus B, you know, that's a, a C function um, that has two inputs. Well, the Haskell is going to go, no, 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 that's only one input. It's just, it's a tuple. There you go. It's a tuple. Um, in Haskell syntax, it would just look like this, you know. Um, now we have brackets because it's a tuple. And that really, they'd say that C is overcomplicating it because functions with one input, you still pass it a tuple, but it's like a one tuple. I don't know. Um, so I, I could define a function, say, uh, add int, which uh, in Haskell is going to take in A and B, and it's going to return A plus B. And then I can go add int um, 10 and 7, 2. 12, cool. But um, that's not really how we do things in Haskell. We, we, we've kind of abstracted, we've already abstracted um, function application by saying, okay, it only takes one input. Um, so what Haskell types normally look like is, um, well, I'll redefine add int. Um, I'll redefine add int. So normally it would look like this. Okay. Um, and the, the type would be, int to int to int. And now this seems completely unclear. What's going on? It's not clear what the inputs are and what the outputs are. But like I said, there's only one input. 
and Haskell has implicit bracketing. So what this is saying is addint takes in an integer and returns another function, which will add that integer to whatever. So we, we can we can kind of experiment with that. We can make an increment function, which add int one. And now in ooh, incur and then ten. It's gonna give me eleven. And that's called partial application. But that's because add int one returns a function that adds that one cool so great we've 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 sort of abstracted away from that okay um so maybe something to mention is casing you'll notice that all of my functions start with a lowercase um letter uh, they have to um unless you're defining infix functions which are made out of symbols um the reason for this is because types, um, like int, for example, you can see up here, chartable, they start with uppercase letters, as do data constructors. Um, but more on that when we cover data types, which I don't think we're going to cover in this tutorial. Um, so great. Um, function composition next. So I have my inca function. And I want to join that. I, maybe, maybe I want to do it twice. What I'd do is I'd go dot inca and then uh, this is a function in its own right if I give it 10 it'll give me 12 now what that dot does is it's an infix operator and it takes in two functions this one and this one and it and it returns another function that passes the input to this one and then the output of that one gets passed into this one um, and this is kind of how you build programs in Haskell you use function composition um, you compose functions together to sort of extend function, add functionality to your program. Um, great. So next thing maybe to cover are lists. So lists are, are linked actually in Haskell by default. Um, there are libraries that will give you arrays and vectors, but um, it makes it makes a lot more sense in Haskell to think about linked lists. And the reason for that is because Haskell programs don't have state. They have um, no no such thing as a variable. And so going through arrays is quite difficult um, because you, you can't really keep track of where you are in an array. Everything's done through recursion. Um, so it makes a lot more sense to think about lists uh, as linked. But I define them a bit like an array. Here's a list one, two, three. Um, I can join lists together with plus plus. Oh, well, that'll do. Um, I can add to the front with colon. Um, that's kind of like the join operator in a linked list. We're saying four is attached to that list. Um, we call it cons, um, but it's colon. Um, there's also list comprehensions. Um, and ranges. So ranges are quite cool. If I go one dot dot ten, I'm gonna get the list one to ten. Um, I could go character a dot dot character z, and now I'm gonna get you know that string, which is just a list of car uh, characters. Um, what else? Um, I can have infinite lists in Haskell. So if I don't add an end, it's just gonna keep on going. Um, and the reason you can have you can you can use them in code. Um, for example, take ten returns the first ten elements of a list, and you can see it, it accepted an infinite list just fine. Um, the reason for that is because Haskell is a lazy language, so it doesn't compute anything until it has to, um, and then once it has computed it, it tends to remember it. So um, that's why you can have infinite lists. If I go x, x is equals that, um, that was just fine because it didn't evaluate the infinite list. It, it decided it didn't need to. Um, but if I force it to evaluate x's, then it has to evaluate that infinite list. Um, and it has, at this point, remembered that x's, the, what x's is up to, what's that, 1,792. Um, so, 
And the reason for that is uh, the reason it was forced to evaluate it is because when I when I wrote just X's, the REPL went, okay, we need to print this list. So what's the first element? Oh, I don't know. Let's work it out. Oh, it's a one. Great. We've printed that. Now what's the next one? And it, it sort of evaluates in that order. Now you can do um, quite powerful things with list comprehensions in Haskell. So um, let's clear that again. A bit of a nightmare to look at. Um, so let's define a function map. There is a map already. And it works exactly as you'd expect. Um, map um, plus one, one to 10, adds one to them all. Uh, but we're going to redefine this using list comprehensions. So map, um, I've got to add the prime uh, because I can't redefine uh, standard functions um, in Haskell. So what it's going to do is it's going to take a function, it's going to take a list, and then we're going to use a list comprehension. So I'm going to say it is that function with n as an input, where n is simply x's, you know, one at a time. And that, uh, that gives me map prime, map prime, plus one, x's. Cool. Oh, I forgot x's is the, uh, the infinite list, uh, one to 10. Okay, there we go. Um, that's, that's nice. So that's, uh, yeah, we can also add sort of um, predicates. So filter, for example, let's redefine filter. Filter takes in a function that maps a value to a Boolean. It's like a check. Um, and it also takes a list. And what we're going to say is it's just n, where n is going to be coming out of x's and p um, pn has to be true. So now filter um, is even, I think it, or is it just even? Yeah, it's even. Um, so that's a function that takes in um, a number and returns true if it's even. And we're gonna give it one to 10 again. Lovely. Um, cool. So that's, you, you'll notice that list comprehension is, uh, the syntax is a lot like um, sort of set comprehension in mathematics. Haskell borrows a lot of its syntax from mathematics. And for good reason, you know, the syntax of mathematics has evolved over hundreds of years, maybe more. Um, and so it's very ergonomic. And so it makes sense to sort of steal your syntax from mathematics. It's going to be nice. Um, cool. Next, I think... Uh, the next thing is probably, let's make a sample program. So let's make one, oh, okay. Let's make a program that counts um, character frequency in a string. Maybe you want to analyze a language. I don't know. I don't know why you want to do this, but uh, it's quite cool because we've not learned much Haskell, but we're going to make quite a useful piece of code out of it. So colon E, um, that's going to let us edit our Haskell function. So I'm going to have to start with those imports again. Data.char, import data.list. Um, I didn't really show you anything from data.list. I thought I would, but I didn't. But I'm going to use it now. Um, so we're going to define a function run. And that's going to sort of... It's a bit like what main will be um, when we get to what all this IO stuff means. Um, but run, we're just gonna call from the REPL. And its type is quite easy. It's gonna be string two. And then how I think we should output this is a list of tuples, um, where we're gonna have a character and how many of them there were. Okay. Now, oof. Okay, so the first thing I think we need to do is we, we should probably count uppercase and lowercase letters as the same thing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have this function called can, 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 canonical without a P. I don't know if that's how you spell canonical. 
Um, canonical, let's define it. No, it doesn't matter if I define functions uh, above or below where they're called. It's um, hoisted, I think the term is. So what that's going to do is it's going to map a string to a string. And what that's going to do is say we are given um, a lowercase letter, it'll leave it alone. Say we're given an uppercase letter, it will um, make it lowercase. And if we're given anything else, we shall ignore it. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to say, I'm going to start with a filter, OK? And what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter out all the spaces. Um, yes. So that's how you do not equals. It's not exclamation equal. Oh, I've got a funny font. It's not like that. It's um, slash. OK, so I'm filtering out everything that isn't uh, a space. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to map over normalize. So I've, I've not defined normalize yet. Um, normalize. What this is going to do is this is going to map a character to a character. It's going to put every character into its canonical form. Now, I'm not going to bother defining the type. I don't need to. Haskell has type inference. You only you use type definitions if you want to document your code, if you feel it's necessary, or if Haskell breaks and asks you to, or um, if you're doing a lot of type level programming, which is a long way, long way away in this tutorial series. But anyway, normalize. So I'm going to show you something called guards. It's a way of doing conditions. So it's going to take in a character. Um, notice here, though, for, with canonical, I didn't actually um, specify it had any inputs. Um, and that's because I'm using function composition. So remember, filter takes in a predicate and a list. And map takes in a function and a list and returns a list. They both return lists. So what this is, what's happening here is I'm taking map and I'm giving it a function. So now the type of, I'm going to use my mouse, the type of this is um, list to list. Filter takes in a predicate in a list. We've given it a predicate. So the type of this is list to list. And then I compose them together with dot. There's no need to give it an input. With uh, normalize, I am going to have to give it an input. So C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of those functions in data.chi. I'm going to say is um, upper. And this line here, this pipe, is a guard. So what comes after is a condition, a Boolean condition. And it's going to run that line if it's true. So is it uppercase? Um, I'm going to say we'll keep all the ones uppercase. So we'll just return C. Uh, no, whoops. Don't need to write that again. OK, so the next condition is lower. C equals, and now we're going to go to lower C. So uh, to lower just makes an uppercase thing lowercase. And then finally, anything else, oh, ho, ho. that aligns so nicely. So otherwise, it's sort of a catch-all case. Um, we're just going to output space, and that's because space is filtered out. Um, cool. So I, I have this function canonical. Let's see if I made any mistakes. Um, oh, interesting. Canonical. Oh, string to string. What did I forget? Um, normalize. What's it saying? Couldn't match type char with char. Oh, of course. It's because uh, canonical is string to string, and I've said this function is string to and then something else. Um, what I'll do for now is um, I'll say undefined and comment that out. So that's that's quite um, quite a nice feature of Haskell is that it is so strongly typed that the joke is if it compiles, it works as intended. You don't really get runtime errors. Now it won't complain. And it hasn't. Good. So uh, let, let's try this. So canonical and then let's give it a string. Hello world. So we've got some, some, and I'll give it some punctuation. And now we just have hello world. Oh, interestingly, it's kept the uppercase. I don't want to do that. 
Um, ah, whoops, um, to upper. There we go. Much better. Okay. So now that we see, so I'm showing you how to debug um, code as you go along using GHCI as a REPL. It's very useful. Okay, so the next the next step would probably be to sort the letters. Um, so what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to say um, sort dot canonical. Um, so char, they can be ordered, you know, A is less than Z, and it means that we can sort that list, and sort is provided by data.list. Um, but I'm going to undefine this again, um, because I want to show you uh, another function called group. So group is an interesting function. Um, let me show you what it does. If I give it maybe a list one one two, it's going to group that into one one. So it's a list of lists, one one two. If I give it another one here, you see that's in a list of its own, and that's why I've sorted the list. Um, so the idea is that essentially, if I go group dot sort um, dot uh, canonical. I say f equals, and then if I go f, hello, then uh, yeah, it's quite nice. It's 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 um, that's how we're going to do the letter frequency basically. Um, so the final step would be to um, count how many things are in each uh, each inner list, and Count how many things are in each in a list and char int. Okay, so um, display it well is the answer. So what I'm going to do is we've got sort and then group. And then I'm going to make something called um, display. Now what we're going to do is we're going to map over our, our sorted grouped, sorted and grouped list. And we're going to use a lambda here. So lambdas in Haskell, backslash is how we, backslash and then the input. So I'm going to call it x. Um, so x here is going to be one of those inner lists. Um, and it's going to return a tuple, just like up here, where the first thing in the tuple is going to be um, the letter we're counting, and then how many of them. So head x. What that's going to give us is the first element of that list, which is what we're going to display. The second thing in the tuple is going to be length x, the length of the list. And then if we go back here, oh, whoops, <laughs> insert no display. There we go. So let's test it. Run. Hello, world. And we have our letter frequency. Um, not a very interesting one, um, but a letter frequency nonetheless. Um, hello world, my name is James. Fantastic. And so we've kind of made, in a way, our first program in Haskell. Um, and it didn't take much, did it? Lovely. So next time I will talk about types um, and type polymorphism and how and how we use them to write Haskell programs because so far I've I've not really shown you enough Haskell to say define group that function um, but uh, yeah next time fantastic um, hopefully see you then <laughs>